Hello, my name is Jim Entz, and I'm a supervising attorney with the Home Preservation Project in Farmers Branch, and I'm here with Juan Calvo. Hello, I'm Juan Calvo, and I'm a staff attorney with the Home Preservation Project, and I'm in the Lubbock office. Today, we're here to talk to you about some of the most common and costly errors tenants make often when they may not fully understand their own rights. We'll also talk to you today about what to do if you have problems with your rental unit or your landlord. The first thing on our list that many tenants believe is that what is in the lease does not matter. That is 100% false. Because the lease is a contract, it states the rules that you and your landlord must follow. If there's a legal issue about your rental agreement, the lease is used by the court to determine almost everything related to the issue. Every tenant should read the lease before they sign it because it is a legal contract. Not knowing what's in the lease can be the biggest mistake tenants make. It spells out everything from the rental, from what behaviors you're allowed to do, how many days notice you must give before you move out, to the necessary procedures for asking your landlord to make repairs. Please become familiar with the lease. That's exactly right, Mr. Jim. The next myth I want to talk about is that many tenants mistakenly believe they cannot pay their rent or they don't have to pay their rent if the landlord hasn't made the repairs they've requested. This is also false. And it's actually one of the worst things a tenant can do because the landlord tenant law in Texas is complex and unforgiving. Once a tenant stops paying rent, that tenant is likely heading towards an eviction. In Texas, the court will not listen to the tenant's complaints about the repairs that have not been made. If the tenant is behind in rent, that's the key focus. If you followed your lease and followed directions to make the repair request, but the landlord hasn't responded to you or they haven't made the repair, then the best procedure and the next step to do is to go to the justice court, the justice of the peace, and ask the judge for help. You would ask the judge by filing a repair and remedy lawsuit. The judge may order that rent can be withheld from the landlord, or they can offer another solution that's available to the judge by law. They have a wide variety of remedies they can choose from. And I need to stress that under Texas law, you must be current on your rent to make the repair request to your landlord or to ask the judge for help. This is why you must pay your rent. Another belief many tenants have is that they cannot be evicted if they miss only one payment. That is incorrect. While it's true that some landlords will not try to evict a tenant unless they've missed several payments, we at Legal Aid see cases all the time where a landlord moves quickly after only one missed payment. Sometimes a quick eviction is filed because the tenant is paying less in rent than the landlord could get from a brand new tenant. In those situations, some landlords take the very first opportunity to get a tenant out of the apartment to make more money by renting it to a new tenant. Also, many tenants believe that a landlord must renew their lease. This is not the case. We often hear from tenants who are unhappy that their landlords refuses to renew their lease. In most cases, it's entirely up to the landlord whether or not to, a lease should be renewed. It's important for you to review your lease and see what it says about renewing. It's possible that the lease says you can renew so long as you follow your rights and obligations under your lease. Again, it's important to know what's in that document, that lease. Another belief that tenants facing eviction have is that if I can just get in front of the judge and explain why I'm behind, the judge will understand and won't evict me. That is false. There are really only two issues that will be looked at and decided on an eviction hearing at the Justice of the Peace level. The first issue is the reason for the eviction or what's called the grounds for the eviction. The most common ground is being behind on any amount of rent, with breaking the lease agreement in any way as close second. Common examples of breaking the lease are allowing someone to move in with them who is not on the lease or bringing in a pet without permission or not paying the pet deposit. The second issue the judge considers is did the landlord follow the law when delivering the notice to vacate? The court is not allowed to consider your personal circumstances when evaluating these two issues even when they aren't the tenant's fault, like being laid off work or even being in the hospital. In fact, people have been evicted while under hospice care 
or affected by other serious situations. Unfortunately, those are not issues that the court can listen to or consider during an eviction hearing. Yeah, and those are especially hard, Mr. Jim. You're absolutely right. Another false belief that tenants share is that the landlord is required to work with you in obtaining funds from, for example, nonprofit agencies or any other rental assistance agency out there to become current on their rent. Unfortunately, here in Texas, many landlords simply do not want to fill out the paperwork, go through the extensive process, um, and just jump through all the hoops that sometimes these agencies require, and will just tell the tenant that they will not accept any type of help from outside organizations. If this should happen, ask the organization if they're willing to pay you directly so you can pay the landlord yourself. That's not always the easiest, and sometimes they won't do it, but it's always good to ask because you never know what will happen. However, the landlord may still refuse the payment, even if you show that you can get the money to become current on rent. And the landlord can still proceed with an eviction, even if you show that you have all the money to become current on your rent. So weigh your options and try to do what you can. So the landlord promised not to evict me as long as I paid $1,000 on the 1st and $500 on the 15th. Can I rely on that promise to stop my eviction? No. That's another misconception. It is very difficult to prove an oral promise in court. It is your word against the landlord. The judge has never seen you in his or her court, but they've seen that landlord there every single week. They are more likely to believe the landlord. So get any and all agreements in writing to protect yourself. As an aside, most leases also state that verbal agreements to change the written agreement are not enforceable. Many tenants also believe that the landlord must accept partial payments. This is again false. The primary reason is that the lease will state in some form or another um, in most leases that a full payment must be made on the date that is specified in the lease. Typically, we see at legal aid that the due date would be around the 1st. There are some rare ones that say maybe the 15th. But whatever date's in your lease, that's the important one. The only payment a landlord must accept is a full payment on that date that's specified. A landlord can require the full amount of money uh, of rent owed and can refuse the payment until you have the full amount. And remember, the landlord is not a bank. If you do not have the full uh, payment yet for your rent and you put a partial payment on the account, it, it can still be rejected. And even if you hold a partial payment in your own account, don't spend that money until you have the full payment saved up because you never know if once you have all the money, maybe then the landlord will actually accept it. Many tenants believe that if they have an emotional support animal, they are not required to disclose this to the landlord. Again, that's completely false. If you do not disclose the fact that you have an emotional support animal, the landlord will assume it's a pet. Most leases require that the landlord approve in advance of any pet and charge a pet fee. Make certain you disclose this fact prior to trying to move in with your pet. You must also show evidence that the animal is needed as an emotional support animal because the landlord is not required to simply take your word for it. That's right, Mr. Jim. And typically you can use such as a doctor's note or some kind of outside source that will say that this emotional support animal is needed. So. Too many tenants believe that they can just move out of their apartment, either to avoid an eviction because the case has been filed, or they're at the end of their lease and they just want it to be gone. That's not how a move out is done. If you're a tenant, you must do what we call a good move out. That means you notify the landlord you're no longer occupying the apartment, and it's best to document that um, that disclosure to your landlord in writing, so maybe a text or an email if you have that. Um, and then you return the key and you leave a forwarding address with your uh, with your apartment. If possible, to get some type of receipt from the landlord showing that you did turn in the key or that you're, they acknowledge you that you have moved out, that's important. If they will not provide you with some kind of receipt, take a photo of you returning the key as proof or maybe even a video. Importantly, this process does not stop an eviction, and a tenant must still show up to the court date. So you 
Just because you moved out doesn't mean the eviction has to be called off. It can still go through. It's important to check your mail and update your mailing address with the Postal Service once you have moved out because the court will send their summons via mail. So once you update your, your mailing, you will avoid missing any important court notices. Another common myth believed by many tenants is that as long as you pay before the late charges are actually assessed, then your rent is not actually late. That is false. Whether or not your rent is late is determined by the date stated in your lease, not by when the late charges are put on your account. Your rent is technically late if paid after it is due. So, for example, if your rent is due on the 1st, it is late on the 2nd. Some leases give you a grace period before they start charging late fees. If those late fees begin on the 3rd of the month and you pay at 6 a.m. on the 4th, they can charge you late fees even though you got it in before those fees actually hit the books. However, if you pay the rent on the 3rd, then it is already late and could potentially be grounds for an eviction and you're not worried about late fees then. Last but not least is the defense that you have given the apartment. Um, a check every few months, every time, uh, every since you moved in. If you cannot possibly behind, be behind in rent, you may actually have a defense to your eviction. And while this may be true, it also can be false. The important thing here is that you need to reach out to us so we can investigate. Because just the act of the tenant giving a check to the landlord to pay for what needs to be done, some of those can be returned for insufficient funds. So if that check bounces, it doesn't actually count as a payment. So even though you were trying to send in these checks every month on time, some things happen. So we need to investigate and look at it more. Check payments are the best form of payments because it gives you a record. Right When you pay cash, sometimes the landlord doesn't give you a receipt. Money order receipts, too, sometimes can get lost because they're very small. So the checks are really good uh, proof of evidence of payment. If the payment is made by, again, by money order or cash, try to get that receipt from your landlord. They're required to give you it. And if the landlord does not give any receipts, then you should follow up your payments with an email stating something to the lines of, this is to confirm that I have actually paid my rent for August, for example, on this date. Please contact me immediately if your records don't show that payment. That way you're giving them, the landlord, a chance to correct or address any issues. Equally important, sending a check for your rent every month may not actually cover what's owed. This is very important when talking about grounds for eviction. So if there were other fees added to your account, it may not be that you actually paid your rent. Many leases allow payment to go towards the fees before being applied to your rent. So the amount of money owed can be characterized as rent, even though you believed you've paid in full. This means you can face eviction due to non-payment of rent. Just to expand on this briefly, if you owe $1,000 in rent with a $100 late fee, and you pay $1,000, your lease may say 100 of your payment goes to the late fee, and then the remaining 900 goes to your rent, thereby owing $100 of rent, and then that gives the landlord grounds for eviction. That's why it's important to know your lease and to know what you're paying. One, we see that a lot, don't we? We absolutely do, Mr. Jim. Juan and I hope this presentation has helped you understand the truth about eviction and will help you avoid many potential problems. But if you do need help or advice, please contact the Home Preservation Project at Legal Aid. You can reach us at 469-405-2399 to apply for assistance. Thank you. Thank you.